FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Gospels and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast once again. After the introduction um, that we just heard, where there is, a, I'm always confused when we start this podcast. I don't know what to say. It's always awkward because <laughs> actually the introduction says, "Welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast." As long as you say you're not Justine, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine. right. We're good. We're good. <laughs> but, and how are you, Justine? Yeah, I'm doing good. Just you know, living my best life. Living my best life now. <laughs> um, it's really cold yeah like we're, we're in the middle of winter here yeah. sometimes i think melbourne if you're gonna be this cold can you just snow like that would be nice eh? maybe just for a week and but then... i'm scared it will ruin my plants snow your plants my plants What's my your plants plant I'm sorry <laughs> well, i like plants I, 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 I'm, I'm an avid gardener as long as i don't need to do any gardening because right. i was a low maintenance gardener <laughs> but i like colors i like having red plants and i like having bright colored plants it's um for someone who wears Black often. I'm really <laughs> glad to hear there's some color in your life. <laughs> yes, there and here is. I am in a bright well, my, my, my socks, for those of you, I, I, I don't know how flexible I am, but I want to put my feet up. <laughs> I have socks. My, I always wear colorful socks. So I have um, black is what I usually wear, but and then my socks are always you very colorful. You express yourself through your socks. <laughs> I do. I do. Some, at least don't deprive me of, of color, but not my, give me some not color in my socks, life. Not the socks, okay. <laughs> Anything but the socks. <laughs> but it's a, it is a blessing this week we have um again we're going to explore the the word of god the gospel but also it, this week we ha we have a very special saint now for those of you who are overseas you mightn't even have heard of the saint we talk we're talking about this week but for us this is just a heads up our scripture this week is taken from from matthew is it miss matthew it is Matthew. Uh, Matthew 20, um, 6, 25 to 34. Now, in, if, you, if you come from the States or you come from Indonesia or I India or wherever you come from, this scripture might actually be different in your parish this weekend. Because ours is a, yeah. is a solemnity. <gasps> right. Because she's an Australian saint. She's an Aussie girl. Yeah. So, uh, again, if this isn't the reading in your parish this weekend... I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of this. It's anyway. just a very special bonus for you. <laughs> exactly. We, we understand. But also, there's ne never anything lost when we understand the Word of God. And we go deep into the Word of God. So, I think let's begin by reading the scriptures, which you're going to talk for one second, because I'm going to go again, <laughs> get up and pick up my Bible from, from another it. room. I'm not going to lie, for the last 24 seconds of you talking, <laughs> I was saying, there's no Bible on the table. Do I know it well enough? I don't know. So, he's running in his socks, and that's a very dangerous thing to do in a house with floorboards. So, um, if he doesn't come back, we'll know he's slipped. And <laughs> he's back. Thank you so much. So we'll be reading from Matthew 6, um, 25 to 34. This is, we are prepared. But just, <laughs> <laughs> You've never flicked through your Bible as fast as right now. <laughs> so Matthew 6, 25 to 34. I'm going to hand this to Justine and um, we're going to go from 25. Matthew 6. He's leading me astray. He's pointed to the wrong thing. <laughs> It's about murder. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, just because I said the thing about the plants. Um, beautiful. So if you'd like to turn to your own Bibles, Matthew 6, 25 to, 20, uh, to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. That is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. 
Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble, trouble of its own. Sheesh. Do not worry. Yeah, it's easier said than done. I reckon. And this was a big, um, l- big little smack in the face doing my study for this because I am a worrywart. Yeah. I have so many grey hairs that can testify to my worry. I don't see any grey hairs. Yeah, <laughs> there's a spray. <laughs> it's a colour spray. <laughs> spray the grey away. But um, it was really great to unpack this and I think it really enriched my... um. A personal life. There's a lot of worrying going on. There is a lot of worrying. And I think it's a natural thing for us to do, mm. to, to worry about things and to be anxious about things. But the, there's also different levels of worry. Mm. It's okay to, to worry, but not to worry to the point where you lose your joy. This is where it becomes a problem. Yeah. And the, the word that Jesus is using in this, in this scriptural verse, he's not, first of all, he's not telling us not to be concerned about our lives. He's not telling us not to... Um, to to look after ourselves and to be reckless, but he's forbidding, and I use the word forbidding not lightly. He's like he's he's commanding these people not to marry mer- Nan is is the word. So, Sorry, can you say that again, mer- please? <laughs> mer- <laughs> mer- Nan. Wow. So Merim Nan is the word is to worry anxiously. Don't worry mm. anxiously. Don't lose sleep over your your life and the things that you have to do. You see, the, the work you do, the life you live, the leisure you have, the property you own, the, the, the things you have are never, ever as important as, as, as your peace and as your joy. Mm. So he's saying just fight for your joy. Do whatever it takes to maintain joy. I don't know if you uh, ever worry. Like one of the things that we worry, I worry mostly at night. Um, I wake up at three in the morning and I, I just cannot go back to sleep because I worry about so many things. And sometimes I don't even know why I'm worried. Mm-hmm. I'm worried. Then I wake up in the morning and I start to think, wait, hold on. Why was I so worried? <laughs> yes. And it's like hyper aware in the middle of the night. Like it's just, it's exaggerated at that hour. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, and it, that's what Jesus is saying, just trust. And one of the things that I do at that moment is I, I actually... My, I put on the Hello app and I, I listen to a Bible story or a meditation. I use another app called Calm where I do a nighttime mm. meditation. Or I pray a decade of the rosary. But when I'm really anxious, even the rosary doesn't really help. It's just um, so I, I need some kind of meditation, relaxation, prayer. Um, so it, it, that's part of life. It's part of life. But the thing is, we he asks us to do something about it. When you're wired, when you're anxious, mm. don't... What what does worry do to us, and how do we have the power to overcome that worry? Mm, yep, uh, it's a bit of a wake up call, like a very compassionate but real wake up call. Like, who can add a cubit to their life by worrying? You, you just can't. You don't gain anything from it. Yes. Um, so I think it's like it's interesting that oh, I was reading that. It's I think it's who can add a cubit to their height. Yeah, back with the height thing. <laughs> but a cubit is is like. Eight feet. Uh, what? <laughs> exactly. What? It's like, why would Jesus have said that? This is no, you can't add a cubit to your height. Maybe that's the it's point. Like, yeah. Well, anyway, you can't. But Jesus used to speak often in the superlative, you know, mm. like in the almost exaggerated. That, like it's difficult. It's more, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That's yeah. superlative, <laughs> exaggerated, and like He's speaking to people like me who have really little brains, <laughs> and we need some exaggeration to get it. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <I understand that. laughs> Good point. So uh, it's just saying, like, you, you can't add a day to your life. You can't add days to your life and actually anyway we'll talk a little bit about this but worry acts and works against what we're worried about we'll we'll talk a little bit about that totally but there i think there's different types of anxiety and worry and this is what's one thing i want to acknowledge as well that jesus is talking about here he's talking about worry and concern and uh, sort of too much care too much 
um, care for and, and holding on too tightly to the things of this world. When we hold on too tightly, then our hands are too occupied, preoccupied to hold on to what is most important. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm. So let's talk about a few points. Uh, first of all, what worry does. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're going to give a few tips of how Jesus said we can deal with that worry and, and, and sort of let go of that worry. Mm. Great. Well, the first thing that struck me was um, that worry can make your faith little. Like to use the words of this scripture, worry can diminish and weaken your faith. And for some reason that had never really occurred to me. I thought worry can affect you mentally, can affect you physically, but can actually affect your faith. And so, yeah, this really resonated with me um, yesterday. And so in the passage, Jesus says to this audience um, that they had little faith. And I was kind of just imagining, you know, those who had started to follow Jesus, it was pretty radical at that time. They had really had their moment with Jesus and had left everything behind, like family, security, food, clothes, and and they're on the road and, you know, a couple of days pass and a couple of weeks pass and then, oh gosh, like maybe the worry started to set in, like, did I do the right thing? Like if, if we really, if we continue to follow Jesus, like will, will our needs really continue to be met? Um, and, you know, these people followed G who followed Jesus, they had the faith to believe that he was the Messiah and yet had little faith to believe that they would have their daily needs met um, by Jesus if they continued to follow him. And I thought like, gosh, yeah. this is... So we like we can trust God with the big things, like I follow Jesus and I'm going to find joy. But and then when it comes to the the things that to provide for the big things yes. that God will provide, our need to look after our family, the details yes. that we chicken out in a sense. Totally. Yeah, because of the, the, that God is going to provide for us. Mm. I, I like the, this, one of the things I, I follow um, is this RSL. RSL is Return Service League. So it's like you're um, in the United States, you have the... Um, Veterans, veterans and, and looking after the veterans. We have a, a thing called the RSL, and the RSL um, issue a lottery. Now, the way the lottery works is that you usually win, not money, but you win a house, or you win... <laughs> Just casually. <laughs> not money, but, 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 but it's not a nice house. It's like a $5 million house. Like over get in, me some in the of these Gold tickets. Coast. Where can I get my RSL <laughs> yes. tickets? It's like overlooking the Gold Coast, in, which is like nice. um, our Miami, you know, like this beautiful... <laughs> place overlooking the ocean, a $5 million apartment. And I started to think, there's no way I'm even going to play that lottery because I couldn't even afford to keep that house. You know, there's no way mm. I, uh, if, if I win the lottery, there's no way I'm going to be able to pay my flight to be able to go and, <laughs> and I mean, live I'll have in the house. house. It'll be empty because I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, so what's the point? And then I have to do all the hassle. I have to hire someone to to look after the house for me. I have to find an agent to do this. If I want to sell it, I'm going to have to find a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And so there's this big thing that you're called to, this big gift, but then you start to worry about the little things. Yeah. So what do the RSL do? <laughs> the RSL sort of think about that. They provide for that also. So it's not only the house you win, but you also win um, a year's rates paid, all, all paid for, for one year. Okay, this allows amazing. you to establish your, your feet. But also, not only that, they will give you and provide for free and commission free the estate agent. So if you want to sell it, you will get the money without the commission. Also, they will provide someone to help you rent it if you will rent it for free. So they will provide. But not only that. Are you wait, a sales rep? <laughs> wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> and they will give you 50,000, say if you buy a $50 ticket, they will give you $50,000 worth of gold. If you buy an $80 ticket, you will get $80,000 worth if of gold. If you win. If you win. Not if you, if win. you just buy the ticket. Yeah, so, so they, they, they provide the cash for, for, to be able to keep that property. So even if you could never afford it, you couldn't, now you can if you win the lottery. Now, why am I saying this? Not to endorse the RSL and the lottery, even though now even I want to <laughs> I mean, to I'm it. Googling it under the table right now. <laughs> yeah, you have, mind you, you have to be Australian to, to even do it. <laughs> but the thing is, this is how God works. God gives us, he says, look, follow me, come follow me, this big thing, this big mansion, and I'm going to give you um, sort of just 
uh, I'll give you a life full of joy. But then we follow Jesus and we think, oh, wait, wait, but I have to go and bury my father. I have to do this. And uh, there's no way I can't follow. What will people think of me? What will people do? And we start to worry about these things. And he says, wait, 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 I'll provide for that also. And then you start to think, but this, there's no way I'm going to afford this. I, I, don't, I don't want to give up my music. I don't want to give up mm -hmm. my, my job. I don't want to give up this. And he says, wait, there's more. <laughs> and he gives us this gold bullion and he tells us, no, I'm going to give you more. And this is where worry comes in. When we don't trust yeah. that God is going to give us the gold, mm -hmm. not um, figuratively, that God is not going to provide the, the estate agent and is not yeah. going to provide. God provides everything. So when we worry, we are literally telling God, I maybe believe this big thing, but I don't believe you. I don't, my faith is too small mm -hmm. to believe that you're going to provide for these other things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and this is why it makes our faith small. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I call that the worry whirlwind. And I've been in it mm. before where it's like the next worry and the next and the next. And it really corrodes your the image or the truth of who God is because you're saying, well, you couldn't possibly be powerful enough to do that. You don't actually care enough, God, to be interested in my everyday need or hope or worry or concern. Um, and that, that worry whirlwind leads us further away from God. And yeah, it does. It makes our faith little. Yeah, and God wants to provide for us, and He wants to surprise us, and He wants to give us joy. You know, I just imagine God looking at us, just trust in me, He says, just trust in me, and and He just hands us this gold, and He hands us these these agents, and He hands us all of this, <laughs> and He just takes joy in seeing our surprise, but yet, of course, He's going to provide for us, because we believe in God, we believe in His providence. But I think another point to bring out here is that... We need to buy the ticket. Mm. We need to buy the ticket. We, we, we need to, first of all, decide to follow Jesus, but we also need to work. We need to do our part. We need to work hard. You see, Jesus says, I provide for, for the birds, for the sparrows. How much more will I provide for you? But you, the thing is, uh, it doesn't mean they didn't work. Sparrows, birds worked really hard. They work hard. I don't know if you've ever seen sparrows, but they're just flying on the table and going off the table and they're going one tree to the next and then they've, they're constantly moving. They're constantly working so hard. And in their hard work, they're trusting to be provided for. So trust, is make, make a living. Trust uh, that hard and honest work will pay off uh, as we follow God. So it doesn't mean we don't do our part as well. Totally. Respect to the sparrows. <laughs> I've never yeah. appreciated the work of a sparrow before. Yes. <laughs> and, well, it's exactly. But they provided for. They're just, and they don't worry about the details because they know that and they're going to have enough. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I was definitely personally contextualizing this scripture. <laughs> so this uh, next point that really struck me is, um, probably directed at me. I don't know if anyone else can relate, but worry can actually, it can turn you into a bit of a control freak. Mm. You know, I don't know if this script resonates with anyone else. Please tell me it does and it's not just me. But, you know, God, like I can do a better job. You know, you're not working fast enough, God. Like move over. I'll do it. It's okay. You know, God, will this situation really work out for my good? Or are you are you really on my side? Are, are you going to hold it out? Have you forgotten me? Do you actually see my hurt, God? You know, instead of trusting God, um, we take over. You know, mm -hmm. we get our big butts in the way yes. um, and we take control because we don't ultimately trust him. And as I was kind of reflecting on that, it took me back to Genesis, to the Garden of Eden. Um, and, and I think this is where this worry stems from. It stems from the doubt that was planted in the Garden of Eden by Satan. Satan who wants us to doubt God's truest character, that he is good, that he's a God who is faithful to his promises, a God who says he means what he says and he does what he says he will because that's who God is. Um, and Satan wants us to doubt that God is trustworthy. So that leads to worry. And so we want to take control. Like I, I do that all the time. And for me, it's not necessarily with food or clothes, but man, I worry about my relationships. I worry about my job. I worry about difficult life situations, how they might turn out, how I want them to turn out. I worry about my future. And then I make the control, uh, the mistake of taking control. 
I like to play the role of God in my life. Yes. It's the biggest mistake, like the biggest <laughs> lesson I've learned is that I suck at being God. Like I am not God and thank God that I am not God. Yes. Like, thank God that he is, you know, and he's, he is holding our lives. Like he is the most qualified person to be in control of our lives. Um, he knows how to do it and he doesn't control our lives by being a tyrant. You know, he controls our life by tenderly holding on to what's important to us. Wow, yeah. Tenderly holding on to what worries you. And, and in his hands, it takes on meaning, you know. Mm. In his hands, God can bring about good for those who love him. Exactly. Yeah. And it's sort of God saying, just mind your own business. Let me be God. <laughs> okay? I like it when God's in control. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, and, and when we take God's business and we, th that's where we, we're disordered. We're, we're, we're in a place where we're doing what we're not called to do. Mm. And we, that's where extra stress, extra anxiety comes. And God tells us, just stop, just stop. Mind your own business. Let me be God. Seek yeah. me and I will look after that. Yeah. And so the, it, we waste so much energy, we waste so much, and including myself. And as we said at the very beginning, it's easier said than done. But we waste so much energy and we lose so much joy when we don't trust God. Oh, man, 100%. And we, just, we just need to just throw our hands in the air and just say, Lord, in your hands, in your hands. Yeah. I, I, you be in control. You are in control. Mm -hmm. Totally. I, um, it was really interesting reading through through the, I suppose, the study side of it. And um, I just thought like, in a sense, I have to be really careful reading a scripture like this. Uh, you're kind of saying this along the lines of we've got to work with God yes, um, and not just demand that, oh, God, like you said, the Father knows your needs and he will provide. So like, where are you at? Like, where's mm -hmm. the thing that I wanted or, you know, the answer to this desire that I had? I think we live in such an instant gratification time where it's like, all right, God, like if you haven't shown up on my watch and haven't given me what I want, then then what are you doing? And you've forgotten me. Um, but that's that's not that's not the way God works. God's care and his providence, it's a process. Yes. It's not a quick fix. He's, he's not into quick fixes because quick fixes break. Yes. You tried to fix your door yeah. <laughs> and it broke and it's stuffed forever. Yeah. But God is into tenderly taking proper care of your life, proper care of what's important to you. He hears it and he doesn't want to rush that process. And it can be so hard. Like I say that, but far out. It is hard when you feel like you're sitting in a bit of a waiting room of God's providence of God's promise. You know, it can be uncomfortable. It can be frustrating when when you you kind of you're waiting out for God. Like, God, you said you'd take care of me. Like, God, I'm still hurting. Like, aren't you going to fix this situation? Uh, and the temptation is to worry. The temptation is to control. The temptation is to to get up and leave. But um, you know, God's plan doesn't work on a 5-second time frame. Yes. <laughs> it's so unrealistic. It's it's a process and it requires like a real gutsy trust. And I think we live in a world where we're promised um, f quick and easy fixes, like mm. five step process to lose weight. Do, yeah. do, you can get fit Doesn't and work. strong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get fit and strong, you know, um, at the gym, you know, like a 12, 12 week program. And then all of a the sudden you've. Bullet. The, you know, and we're all so, we're conditioned this way. And well, if you. Take it this way, if you want to build strength and enduring muscle and you want to build enduring health of body, mind and soul, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort. I, and uh, Justin, I love the image you gave of, of waiting in the waiting room of, of God. And sometimes, yes, part of the growth is the waiting. The waiting is not wasted. It's not wasted time. The waiting room is a time where God speaks. It's, a, it's also a place... A, a, of season where God is at work. And sometimes we just don't want to be in the waiting room. We don't. <laughs> and it's okay to be there because God is present. I'd rather be in a waiting room where God wants me to be than in, in a battleground that God doesn't want me to be. Whoa. Yeah. Because uh, what, what's... The, that was good. You know, I'm, I'm making myself vulnerable. I'm in a place where God doesn't want me to be. Yeah. So if God, if you find yourself in a waiting room right now, Stay there. Find joy there. I'll Trust see you in God the waiting there. room. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in the waiting room. I'm there. <laughs> nah. Yes. That's, but the, that's powerful. 
that's but don't be afraid of these places where you're waiting and and I always love the image of of this is what it is it's a wrestle it's an mm. it's a battle with God mm. and don't be afraid to wrestle don't be afraid to question don't be afraid to doubt don't be afraid to be dissatisfied yeah now sat satisfaction we are that's a beautiful thing dissatisfaction is a beautiful thing it doesn't mean you can't find joy in your dissatisfaction though yeah. in your discomfort yeah and i think that you know if if you're someone who has a really peachy clean idea of what it is to be a christian that's really challenging but real life isn't peachy clean like god wasn't about peachy clean he went to the cross that's right and that was hard um, and so he can handle us being real with him in the waiting room. You, Absolutely. There's crying babies in there, you know. Yes. <laughs> be that crying baby if you need to be. And there are other people who are, who are sick and there are yeah. other people who are there because they have, uh, I don't know, just uh, it's it's an uncomfortable place. Yeah. And yeah. It, sometimes you're away from the action and you want to be in the action and yeah. you want to do this and you want breakthrough. But wait, hold on there. Totally. And we're just trying to keep it real because it can be really easy to just say some really nice things about worry and it'll all be okay. But... Um, but it is, it's this gutsy wrestle and, mm. and we have to be real with it. I really love, um, I feel like this scripture also gives us a, a really helpful and practical tool to sort of reorder our life if we find ourselves in this worry whirlwind. And it says like, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And um, I love that because what that really says to me is just seen. Put God back in the center of your life. Seek him. Seek his kingdom first in the, you know, in the center of your life and then everything else will find its rightful place. Don't put worry center stage. Don't put your control center stage. Put God center stage in your life. And if the things that you so desire or if you're, you're so worried about, if they're meant to be, they will just fall in their rightful yeah. place because he's a good God. He actually cares about you um, and we don't need to be afraid about that. You know, I know, I know, <laughs> you know, when I focus on my worry, the worry just seems to get louder. The problem seems to get bigger. It just seems to get out of control. But when I put the focus on God, even when it's hard and I just put God back in the center of my life, you know, my situation might look the same. Um, but when God increases, you know what? My hope actually does increase. Yes. The truth of who God is um, and what he promises in those moments, it seems to be big enough to handle my situation. So putting God first, um, man, it's the way to go. Yes. And when you put God first as well, it's just such a relief. Because you think yeah. like, oh my goodness, why did I carry all of this, mm. all of this time? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is not to evangelize. The kingdom of God is seek to shut up and let, <laughs> let God be king. Stop <laughs> trying to be king or queen. I love that. Yeah. You know, be in a place where God is king. Seek that God will be in control, the one to provide for you, the one to give for you. And another thing as well, so that's number one weapon for worry. One, seek ye first the kingdom of Ooh, God. Weapons Jesus for means. worry, love it. And the second thing is <laughs> to live one day at a time. Don't live for your financial freedom. Don't live for the weekend. Don't live for your retirement. Don't live for your breakthrough. Don't live for tomorrow. Live now in that waiting room, in that battleground, in that place of preparation. Live to find joy for today. Because you see, if you're going to live until you're financially stable, you're going to live until, okay, I have um, a portfolio that allows me to retire, that allows me to, then you, you're missing out the best days of your life, the best time of your life, which is now. Mm. And so it's about living for now. You see what happens when you put two preachers in a room? It's like we're preaching. <laughs> two Maltese preachers. <laughs> danger, danger. Get out. <laughs> okay, so th we're going to hear a quick um, word from our ministry partner. The production of this podcast would not be possible without the support of our donors and ministry partners. If you've been blessed by this podcast, please consider supporting this ministry financially by making a one-off donation or becoming an FRG ministry partner from just $5 per month, as well as enabling FRG ministry to impact hearts across the world through the creation of online resources and outreach programs. As an FRG ministry partner, you will have access to our rewards program where you can receive exclusive benefits and content to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. 
For more information about becoming an FRG ministry partner, head to frgministry.com slash donate. Mystery time box. The mystery box. Oh, this is my favorite box. It's, it's my turn. We, we've upgraded the box. I'm a bit sad. I like the <laughs> random camera box with many lids. I know. this. No, this is only one lid. Okay. Okay. So here it is. This, this week I had to choose. So the game of this game is that... Um, Justine, or the person who prepares it, has to give the box to the other person. And inside, there's a, a mystery item, an item which is not obvious. This week, it's an easy one. I really wished it was difficult. The denture bath. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I still think it's up there on the most yes. random so far. <laughs> well, it, it's a good one. Um, and, and last week's, I guessed pretty quickly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th- this week's, um, I'm going to hand over to you. Dun, dun, on your dun. box. <gasps> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and so Justine has to guess... What it is, and okay. she's going to describe it to us. I as don't know we... how to handle one lid. Okay, I mean, I'll hold the button. Easy. It's one of those suction oh, okay. ones, though. It's too much air. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, I think this my is eyes. one of those w- wedding boxes. This is like a birthday present I never wanted. This is fantastic. <laughs> wow. <It's laughs> so describe what you what you have there. Well, what we have here is a piece of cloth that's been. <laughs> okay, so how do you explain this? It's a piece of cloth that has a hole at either end. Like a bag that's had you, both ends. You already ends know in. what it is. It's, I mean, I come from a real Woggy household. <laughs> I'm not. So, no, Woggy household, it, it's, explain that. Um, It's like my parents are migrant parents from Malta. And so around the house are very <laughs> oh, no, ugly they, patterns. too quick. And, you know what it is. I mean, look, I'll pretend I don't know. <laughs> no, no, tell Surely us what it is. Surely this is a hat. <laughs> is that right? Or a new sock? Is this what you hold toilet paper in? No. What? No, it's not. I, my mum would put toilet paper in there <laughs> straight away. I mean, I would too. It's not. So, oh, oh. I, then I don't know what it is. You've got okay, me. Him. You um, have another guess. Okay. Um, That's two elastic um, can I have ends. A clue? Yeah. Okay. Two elastic ends. It's a hand warmer. You put both no. your hands <laughs> in it and in the cold winter months. So, this is oh. a win for me. Okay. You, um, Whatever. Whatever. Okay. So, this is um, a plastic bag holder. So you put oh. plastic bags in here. Well, now I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and you put the plastic bags in here, and then you can pull out the plastic well, I don't bags. Use reuse plastic bags. Reuse plastic bags, um, and by pulling them out of or here. Or toilet paper. <laughs> Too small for toilet paper. <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, that's great. Now you can use that. Yeah. Oh, we'll put it in the in oh, the true. raffle. We'll put, but I think the elastic's broken here. We're a little bit too That's what you get from too us. enthusiastic about guessing. I sabotaged your um oh, your mystery anyway, item. That's, that's a win for me. I uh, no no. All right, enjoy your one. win. <laughs> enjoy your win. Plastic bag. So let's hear from this week's thing. Three, two, one. It's time for Who is it this week? It was very um. You kind of left us in a bit of suspense earlier. Well. This week is Saint Mary of the Cross MacKillop. For those of you who haven't heard of Mary MacKillop, she is Australia's only saint? Yes, I think so. Only first saint. So it's a big deal for us. Totally. And it's her feast day this week. So coming up on August 8th. August 8th. But she was canonized on October 17th in 2010. And I remember that because it was only two weeks before my ordination. And I was in Malta... And all of these tens of thousands of Australians were in in Italy, in Rome, for the canonization. And my parents and everyone else was very impressed because we had hundreds of Australians <laughs> at my ordination. And they all thought that they came to Europe just for my ordination. <laughs> no, Rome is literally, what, a 40-minute flight? No, no a bit longer. But, but... <laughs> I mean, you're special, but you're not done special. <laughs> exactly. So I had a lot of people who came straight after the canonization to my ordination they used to say oh we're going to father rob's canonization and mary mcclip's ordination <laughs> but it was <laughs> it's the other way around uh, but this is so she's a very um she's a, an australian saint she loved the poor tell us a little bit more about her yeah so th- she established um a religious order the sisters of saint joseph um and that their order was specifically um, committed to serving the poor. So to going exactly where the need was. And I kind of shared that she was my favorite saint in my intro video Mm -hmm. um, because I loved that she actually just went where the need was. And so um, there are locations all around the city of Melbourne um, where Mary McKillop actually established things like a providence. She established 
a Providence in the middle of a red light district. And lots of people were a bit scandalized by that because mm. they're like, why would you go there? Your sisters. And she said, why wouldn't we go here? This yes. is where the need is. And um, she set up a baby's home. So for mothers who fell pregnant um, outside of marriage. So that's in one of uh, an inner city suburb in Melbourne. Um, so and they're still open. They're still no, it's now um, a school. It's based on a school property. But um, what I loved about her, her order is that they were quite kind of Progressive. Progressive. Yeah. I was going to say revolutionary, but progressive because they were just committed to taking the love of Jesus where the burning needs were. Yes. You know, in the messy middles of life. And that's and this was not long ago. Like she died in 1909. And so like it, there's a lot of like the pilgrimages in Australia. There's a lot of um, feasts. Um, there's a lot of things that commemorate, commemorate her life. Um, but one thing I love about Mary McKillop was that she wasn't liked by the hierarchy of the church. Mm. In fact, she was excommunicated. You know dun, what that dun, even means? <laughs> no, but you... Uh, no, I, I yeah, do, I'm but sure you know what you, excommunicated means. I do, means. but you'll explain it way better. <laughs> no, excommunicated means that like you were out. dismissed. Yeah, they were kicked out by the church. The church said, no, this is a heretic, so you're no longer part of the church. Anathema sint, which means literally you cannot receive communion, you cannot be part of the church, you cannot preach, you cannot minister. And... But Mary McKillop kept focusing on on the poor, kept loving the, those people in the red light district, kept looking after the kids, kept doing her work while all of the hierarchy kept barking and shouting and barking. She she continued to mm. love. To clarify, she actually went to Rome and they um, retracted the excommunication. Yes. So just for the a, record. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it was a, it was a personal ven not vendetta, but it was a personal misunderstanding between the bishop, the local yeah. bishop. And, and her. Mm. And so, but she continued to love and continued to follow her conscience. And this is the thing that sometimes people disagree with us, people, the biggest opposition that even uh, we can get is, is usually from people within the church who don't understand yeah. our heart and our desire to, to serve others. So um, this is why I love her, because she, she just kept focusing on souls, kept focusing on the love of Jesus, yep. even when, when the opposition was so loud. Mm. Quote, famous quote. Yeah, well, we both wrote the same quote. Um, well, that's her most famous quote. I well, think. it is true. I mean, I know I another even know one. An, do you know another I one? I know another one because I went to, um, it's a Josephite affiliated school. So every year uh, we had okay. a McKillop theme. Okay, I can so only remember uh, two. Tell us the one I didn't mention first. Um, we are but travelers here. We are, I've heard that. Which yeah. is really great because we. my mum always says like, we're not made for earth, like we're made for heaven. So yes. remember that your life here is A friend is of mine who has a tattoo on, on there. Oh, sweet. Um, we are but travelers here. But the quote that we were talking about, that we both chose, is what? Um, never see a need without doing something about it. Oof. That's a, like, I, I really struggled with that quote that's like for a long time. That's like three full-time jobs. <laughs> yeah, like never see a need without doing something about it. And I, I think that was something that could lead to burnout. But I think this is, the, the concept of it is so beautiful that don't don't be still, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Yep. Don't let, wait, wait for the right time for it to happen. Um, now live today and serve the poor today and care for those who are in need yep. today. Yeah, love it. So let's hear from our sponsors, um, uh, the, our, our courses ad. FRG Ministry presents our new online course subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to FRG Ministry's growing library of online courses. FRG Ministry online courses cover teaching, devotional and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Pentecost and the Holy Spirit, Introduction to the Bible and more, with new courses being added regularly. All courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and phone wallpapers. Online courses from FRG Ministry are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, Head to courses.frgministry.com forward slash subscription. Topic, topic of the week. Interesting topic. Mm. Connected topic. How can faith 
help us manage anxiety. Oof, oof. It's a good worry. one. Worry. It's a good Is one. Is there a difference between anxiety and worry? Um, I don't know, Father Rob. <laughs> you tell me. I know this is a definition thing. <laughs> I think worry. Yeah, they, I think they're very well connected. I I struggle with anxiety. Mm. I think anxiety is a big thing mm. in my life. I've had to learn to deal with it. I've had to battle with it and since I was a teenager, since I was literally since I was 14. And then it becomes debilitating at times. At times it's rational. Yeah. I think worry is somehow connected to a circumstance or something, but anxiety is a condition. Is the condition that worry brings about? Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. I think worry feeds off the anxiety. Yes. Sometimes as well. So l- let's talk about as Christians. First of all, did you ever feel anxiety? Do you ever go through anxiety? I, I do. Um, I think it, it's kind of funny that they got the two anxious people to be <laughs> on this podcast. God is really awesome at humbling. But yeah, I do I actually do struggle with anxiety. Yeah. And like I confessed, this is confessions. At the start, I, I am a bit of a worry ward. Um, and it can be really overwhelming. And sometimes it's it's not as easy just to say, I'll get over it and don't worry. Like sometimes yeah. that anxiety can be heavy and really real for people. Yeah. So I, I really do believe that um, faith can help us manage anxiety, especially because grace builds upon nature. Exactly. So. And I think that's what you like what you just said. It's about managing our anxiety, managing our worry. Mm. First of all, I'd like to say this, that just because you are a Christian, just because you love Jesus, just because you have a relationship with Jesus and you're part of the church and you're in good standing with the church and, <laughs> and you might be a saint, <laughs> it doesn't exempt you from worry and anxiety. Mm-hmm. 365 times Jesus deals with the words he says in the scripture, do not worry, do not be anxious about tomorrow, do not worry. And it, just one for every day of the year, of yeah. course. And so this, you, because he knew that Christians would worry. He <laughs> knew that his followers would be anxious. Mm. But let's think about, let's be practical here. I yeah. want to be practical. How does a Catholic, a Christian, deal with anxiety? Now, there are certain things that we're going to mention that anyone can deal with, but some certain advantages that we have as Christians and Catholics. Mm -hmm. Let's go through some of the points. Great. Well, um, I think that the first thing I thought of is actually what I try to do is to read the Word of God. Now, this isn't the only solution to anxiety, but it is one way that our faith can help. Um, And I think that God purposely put his word into words and in a book so that we always have, we have this reference point Whenever we freak out, whenever we worry, whenever life gets too much, that we can open this and be reminded of truth. But not only that, it's not just a normal book, you know, that we know. And in Hebrews, it says that his word is alive and active. It does something. Mm -hmm. It's effective. It changes something when we allow it. We read the word, but it's almost like God reads us through his word as well. And there have been so many times especially when I'm anxious and I've been doing this a lot lately where I, I've picked my my particular passages and I read it and and I find enough peace for that moment. Mm. You know, it's not this quick fix, but just for that moment, enough peace or it's like it's spoken to me. So I don't know if you want to do this, but I've put tabs in my Bible, Matthew 6, 25 to 34. So this reading is tabbed in my Bible, Philippians 4, Uh, six to seven is tabbed and the armor of God in Ephesians is tabbed. Every day I read them. So Ephesians? Um, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. So those are three things that are worth highlighting and they talk about anxiety and they talk about trusting in God. Yes. So can you repeat them again so people can write them? So um, today's scripture that we've just gone through, so Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Then you've got Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Um, And then lastly, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Go and tab them in your Bible. And every morning it takes five minutes, but sit, be still and read those. Beautiful. And I think another thing that a Catholic, a Christian can have is is prayer. Speaking to God about it. Talk to God about your anxiety. Meditate. Meditation is so important. Breathing exercises. And I'm not talking about doing a mantra or, or, or focusing on. I'm talking about just stop, breathe. You know what? The beautiful meditation of just breathing in. And just imagining God's breath, the Holy Spirit breathing into you. Breathe out and just imagining with every exhale that the heaviness and your burdens are going to the cross. Mm. So these are important things. So prayer, scripture, meditation, and the discipline of them. Not just once, but the discipline of them. Another thing that I love 
is also um, is to reach out to others, the community, the believing community. Yeah. Cry out to people, tell people, have someone that you can talk to about your anxiety, about your worry. Mm -hmm. You have another point? I do. Um, I think that God puts resources in our lives that are very human. Um, and I'm so thankful that in my world, there is absolutely no stigma about going to see a psychologist. Um, and for me, God has blessed my life and given me a bit of a lifeline through um, going to see a psychologist to talk about um, my anxiety, you know, and it's definitely not a silver bullet, but speaking it out with a psychologist has really um, enabled me to figure out what's at the source of my anxiety and is that rational or is there something that needs to be dealt with in my life um, and to kind of spot the lies out in my life as well, practical skills in learning how to manage anxiety. Um, and I think you have to be just discerning about yeah. your psychologists. Um, I've gone to non-Christian and Christians alike. And for me, I really have encountered God through that. So I would say, don't be afraid if it's getting too much. Like we have an incredible healthcare system here, at least where it's accessible. Especially if you're going through anxiety, that's, that's relentless, yes. that's continuous and, yep. and often irrational. Yeah. And so it's important to, for those of you who have um, rationalized, I think that's what can rationalize your anxiety. It's an important thing to journal, to write down what is worrying you totally. and then to come up with practical solutions. And if you cannot do anything about it, then just let it go, let mm -hmm. it go, move on. Mm. Okay, it's not the end of the world. I don't know, usually not the end of the world anyway. Um, Another thing to do, I think, is important is to establish healthy habits as well. Of Watch what you eat, because I think what your diet affects also your well-being, mm -hmm. you, how you feel. Get enough rest. Get uh, eight hours if you need eight hours. Get Make sure, and don't feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Your health is so important. And also exercise. But these, all these three things, like diet, rest, and exercise, should be a habit, not just when you're anxious. So make sure that you're building a good lifestyle. And then I'd say one other point is learn to say no and not feel guilty about it. Gosh, that's a powerful one. Yeah, learn to say no. Mm. And I think people who learn to say no are, are the happiest people. Mm. Because um, at the end of the day, we're not here to please people. We're here to please the heart of God. Yep. Wow, that was real. <laughs> that, was, that was a really real kind of just laying it out as it is podcast. So thanks for keeping it real. and. I mean, that's what God invites us yes. to. Yes. And also, again, seek help, especially those. We didn't talk about that, but if you're depressed, if you have thoughts, please make sure that mm -hmm. you you seek the help. Um, uh, we have um, Lifeline here in Australia. We have some great help as well that is provided for us by the government. We, But also we pray for you that God will bless you, that God mm -hmm. will give you the strength and the joy you need. Once again, thank you so much for listening to us uh, and uh, for joining us for this po podcast. Please, please review our podcast. If you are on um, iTunes, send us a review. Give us a, a good rating so that we will move up in the algorithm. More people will listen to this podcast. Amen. Also, do you like you? This is your second episode with us. Do you know any of our social media yet? <laughs> Um, look, every time you and Alyssa spin out all that social media stuff, I'm like, please, can I never do that? Because <laughs> everything is different. Yes, it is. Okay, so here we go. So Strap on Instagram, in, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. <laughs> Instagram at Catholic Influencers underscore. Um, Twitter at Cath Influencers. Social, um, if you want to email us, podcast at frgministry.com. Also, website frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Look, if you can't remember any of this, <laughs> Just go to frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Everything is there. All the details are there. And also uh, send us um, snail mail, PO Box 96. Love a good snail mail. <laughs> PO Box 96. Maybe you can send us a mystery box item. Whoa. We'd love to see. It. Yeah, send us a mystery box item. That thing, uh, I, my assistant, our assistant uh, will get it. So we want, uh, she probably won't know what it is. Either. But we want both. Baffle get us. It. We want our minds blown. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so a PO Box 96, um, Strathdale, Victoria, Australia, 3550. So thank you once again. God bless you. And we'll see you again. You'll hear from us again next week. Peace out. God bless.